Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to talk about three protocols that we can use to enhance the security of email communication, SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. SPF is the Sender Protection Framework. It's a fairly simple standard that allows domain owners to specify the mail servers that can send messages from their domains. This is an attempt to eliminate or reduce email spoofing. Using SPF is fairly simple. You create a DNS record that lists the servers who are allowed to send email for the domain. Those records are called, unsurprisingly, SPF records. Let's take a look at the SPF records for a domain. I'm going to use DIG to look up the SPF record for LinkedIn. I'll use DIG, and then I'm going to set the type to text, which will retrieve all of the text records associated with the LinkedIn.com domain. Now, in the answer section for this DNS query, I see a bunch of text records, and some of these are associated with other services like Google Site Verification and DocuSign. The one that I'm interested in is this one here. That's the SPF record. It's telling me that SPF version 1 is being used, and then it goes on to list all of the IP addresses that are authorized to send email on behalf of LinkedIn.com. SPF is an important tool, but it only helps to prevent forged email. It doesn't prevent tampering with email. DKIM is another tool that goes much further. We'll explore DKIM and DMARC in just a moment, but before we do that, I want to invite you to take a moment to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new videos as they come out. DKIM is short for Domain Keys Identified Mail, but everybody just calls it DKIM. DKIM uses digital signature technology to allow domains to sign outbound email messages, verifying their authenticity. In order to use DKIM, organizations must work with their email provider to create a public-private key pair that will be associated with their domain for sending email. The public key is published so that everyone in the world can find it, while the private key is kept secret. DKIM users publish their public key by creating a DNS record. As long as they have control of their DNS server, nobody other than the owner of the domain can create a DKIM record. Let's go ahead and take a look at a DKIM record. I'm going to use DIG again to do a DNS lookup for the DKIM record for the LinkedIn domain. To do this, I need to know the DKIM selector for the domain. You'll see later how you can find this in an email header, but for now I'll just type it in. So I am once again going to look for TXT records, and then I have to type the selector, and LinkedIn selector is D2048-2018-06-01. Then I put a dot, and then underscore domain key, and then the domain that I'm looking for, linkedin.com. And here, in the answer section, we see the public key for the linkedin.com domain. The LinkedIn email servers have the associated private key. Every time a user of a DKIM domain sends an email, the email server creates a digital signature and adds it to the email header. Here's an example of an email message sent to me from the linkedin.com domain. I'm displaying the full headers here. And down in those headers, you'll see the DKIM signature. This is a copy of the message digest encrypted with the domain's private key. When the next email server receives this message, it can get the public key from DNS and use it to verify this digital signature. And that's what you see here. The lines DKIM equals pass mean that the mail server that received this message verified the DKIM signature. DKIM is a valuable tool for protecting email because it can be used to combat spam and phishing campaigns that try to send spoofed email messages using domain names that belong to someone else. The last tool that we need to cover is domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance. Now, that name is a mouthful, and nobody actually uses it. We just call it by the acronym DMARC. DMARC is a protocol that ties together SPF and DKIM by allowing the domain owner to specify whether they use SPF, DKIM, or both, and explain policies on how other sites should deal with email from their domain. Let's take a look at the DMARC record for LinkedIn.com. 
Like SPF and DKIM, DMARC uses a DNS text record. This one is called underscore DMARC. So I'm going to dig minus T and then the text type of DNS record. And then I'm going to look for the record for underscore DMARC dot LinkedIn dot com. And we see the DMARC record in the answer section. The record has a few pieces. First, we see the version of DMARC being used. That's version 1 in this case. Next, we see the policy that LinkedIn wants people to apply to email that they receive that does not pass DKIM and SPF checks. In this case, LinkedIn wants servers to reject those emails. This policy could also be set to quarantine or none. Then we see the addresses where DMARC feedback should be sent, and finally, a specification that the policy should apply to 100% of the email sent from the domain. I hope this video helped you better understand DMARC, DKIM, and SPF. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more IT certification content.